I do believe that we're on. Yes, we are. Been on for three seconds. Now six seconds. Wow. Good morning. Welcome. I'm Pastor Tim Marvel. It is Wednesday, October 16th, 2024. I want to welcome you into this day. You're watching Pastor Tim's Daily News and Devotions, and that's a production of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church in Allen Park, Michigan. That's the church where I am honored and privileged uh, to be uh, the senior pastor. So we get together most Mondays through Thursdays, most weeks. We, sometimes we have, well, vacations and holidays and, and things. Um, and uh, But we do get together. And what we do, well, it's live at 9.30 a.m. So we have some folks that join us live, and it is a hearty and a hail hey, oh, good morning to to uh, they use that. But we have just as many people, if not more, that watch it later on in the day, both on that Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. All of our warships are also available, both live and and uh, in, in, uh, also available as those recorded versions also. also. So, but if you really want to know about Allen Park Presbyterian Church, the best place to go, well, come to. You can come to us at 7101 Park Avenue in Allen Park, Michigan, but you can visit us on the web, and that's www.allenparkpres.com. The hardest thing about Presbyterian is spelling it, so we cut all the hard stuff out of there. It's just Allen, A-L-L-E-N-P-A-R-K-P-R-E-S dot org. And there you can uh, have uh, access to all the information, including links to um, calendars, uh, calendar of events uh, and what's going on and when. Um, like today, we see it's Wednesday, so I could go to that calendar and see that we have our Grief Share group meets online tonight so we're going to uh, do it obviously at 9 30 every morning monday through thursday you see the good news uh you see um uh, this show and then on friday you'll see in the nine o'clock time frame you'll see the good news live which is from carrie van and suzanne maxey they're probably here today so um, i'm going to go down here and say hello to some folks and uh oh we've got our morning crew with us the morning zoo we can call it that Hello, Kip, and Barry, and Margo, and uh, I know that Carrie is here, because there she is, putting up the link in the comment section down there for the um, for the website, and she'll put other ones down there, too, um, such as, you know what we're really pushing right now? Candy. Candy. Um, the um, um, Trunk or Treat is coming up, and... Uh, we need to have a lot of candy in reserve because we, we're going to get inundated with kids. We've got the two blocks in front of the church we're doing in conjunction with the DDA. We've got cars and trunks, and I'm, they are bringing their own candy, but sometimes it's just, you know, you don't understand the surges of candy. So we want to make sure that, so here's your opportunity to, to participate in that ministry. If you can't come down and have a trunk, buy candy because we need a whole bunch in reserve. And uh, we're getting there, but it, this thing is coming up, uh, so we only got about 10 days. Um, so right there, oh, we're halfway, we're halfway there. I can see that 10,000 pieces towards 20,000, so we're getting there. And there's the link right there that you can use it. You can order it on Amazon, have it delivered directly to us. And we thank you so, so much if you can help participate in that ministry. I mean, you got to understand, sometimes, I mean, ministry is about, uh, letting people know that they're loved by God. Um, but to do that, right, um, to do that, we have to have relationships with people. And so this is a great way. And, uh, you know, it's fun at the same time. So it is the only ministry that we do like this, you know, but it's a candy ministry. So help us out with that, all right, if you can. And by the way, come on down on October 25th, that Friday, It'll be from 5 to 7. Uh, we could always use some more help. All right. Sue Tucker, hello. Sandy, hello. Joan Riggs, hello. Happy, happy Ken is with us. And, uh, ooh, wait a second. Prayers for George Mason. Okay. We're testing today. Absolutely. Larry and Carolyn, good morning. Hi, Norma. Norma and and uh, Carrie are our leaders for our grief share. Such a wonderful ministry. Hi, Suzanne Maxey. There's the other 
other uh, host of the Good News Live. Hi, Judy Sutherland. And uh, let's see, what else do we have down here before we get going? Because it's time to get moving. A few more volunteers. There you go. Hi, Tracy. Good to see you. Saw you last night. Trustees met last night. So we continue to see what can we do to help the ministries. That's the whole purpose of the trustees. People say, well, it's to take care of the building. No, it's to, it's to help the ministries. And keeping the buildings in good order is part of that, right? But there's so much more. There's so much more. Um, and uh, so here we go. All right. I am going to go over here. That's, I mean, just go to that website. There's so much going on. I just talked about trunk or treat, but there's much, much more. That's just the first one in a whole line of things that are starting to come down. As far as, you know, we're starting to get towards Advent, believe it or not. Believe it or not. Okay, I'm going to go over the Presbyterian Mission Agency. I'm going to look and do the, our readings here. But before I do that, I'll do my breathing discipline. Just to try to clear my head, I breathe in for a count of five, hold it for a count of five, and then exhale for that same count. If you'd like to join me, I encourage you. All right, here we go. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Our opening psalm for today. Psalm 15. Let us listen for the word of the Lord for us today. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Let those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their own oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. So ends this reading of the Lord, word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. You know, we don't read this one all that much, but it's so short and simple that it's beautiful, right? Oh God, oh Lord, right? who may live in your kingdom, right? The tent was where God lived in the tabernacle times, right? And the holy hill is the temple on Jerusalem. Who may dwell? Who's worthy, right, to do that? Well, and then a whole list of things. Those who walk blamelessly, do what is right, speak the truth from their heart, don't slander with their tongue. Do you see what that's saying? It's not actions towards God, right? Those first things are not actions towards God, they're actions towards each other. Because if we do it with each other, then it'll be easier for us to do it with God. So, and then, so after that relationship with each other, then all of a sudden we start to see these things which have more of a judgmental element to them. In whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord. There's a judgment involved with that, right? So we need the wisdom to be able to make that judgment. But then we have to be willing to stand on our oath, even to our hurt. So these are good and loyal pe you know, people, good friends, right? But even then, you know, the relationship is not transactional at all. Transactional would be, I'm going to, I do this and you do that, right? They don't lend money at interest. That's transactional. They don't take a bribe. I'll dime somebody out if you give me enough money. These are the people, right? So it's the, I love this one because we we could print this out and just put it on our, our bathroom mirrors and, uh, and look at it every morning. We might do better than we do some other days. Okay. I know I would. Now we got another short read. It's Hosea. And uh, we're moving through this prophetic book. Um, and um, going to hear about... Um, some more of the 
of the uh, allegations, the charges that God has against the different nations of Israel. And so we'll hear about, so um, anyway, so Ephraim, remember that? That's the hill country. That's, it's a, it's one of the tribes. All right. We're going to hear about Baal. Baal is the Samaritan, one of the Samaritan gods. Uh, well, not Samaritan, but one of the gods that the local people follow. All right, here we go. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. When Ephraim spoke, there was trembling. He was exalted in Israel, but he incurred guilt through Baal, died. And now they keep on sinning and make a cast image for themselves, idols of silver made according to their understanding, all of them the work of artisans. Sacrifice to these, they say. People are kissing calves. Therefore, they shall be like the morning mist, or like the dew that goes away early, like chaff that swirls from the threshing floor, or like smoke from a window. So I'm just reading the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So uh, it's this is about the religious observances that they had taken up, the, the, the intermingling with the, the people. And remember, when we read uh, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, we, we read about, um, you know, the, the entrance into the land and says, just go and defeat these people and kill them and utterly destroy them. And, and then, but we know through archaeology that, that there was armed conflicts, but there wasn't there wasn't evidence of a widespread single push into it. It was just a gradual uh, diffusion into the land. So, as they came in, they intermingled, intermarried, and they took on some of the worship of them. And that was to idols made by artisans. And the calf, you know, golden calf. So they're they're so now their worship is at these idols, not to the one true God. Okay. Read Acts. So excuse me. So we left Paul on an island on a ship with a centurion who's taking him to Rome so that he can be heard before um, the emperor. But it is getting pretty late in the year, in the fall, and uh, so the winter winds are coming. And we're going to hear about something here called the fast, because the fast had passed. And um, that is, um, fast is Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. So um, that would be uh, generally in the fall. So that's so, all right, let's listen here. This is Acts chapter 27, verses 9 through 26. Since much time had been lost, and sailing was now dangerous because even the fast had already gone by, Paul advised them, saying, Sirs, I can see that the voyage will be with danger and much heavy loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also our lives. But the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than to what Paul said. Since the harbor was not suitable for spending the winter, the majority was in favor of putting to sea from there on the chance that somehow they could reach Phoenix, where they could spend the winter. It was a harbor of Crete facing southwest and northwest. When a moderate south wind began to blow, they thought they could achieve their purpose, so they weighed anchor and began to sail past Crete, close to the shore. But soon a violent wind, called the Northeaster, rushed down from Crete. Since the ship was caught and could not be turned head on into the wind, we gave way to it and were driven before it. By running under the lee of a small island called Cauda, we were scarcely able to get the ship boat under control. After hoisting it up, they took measures to undergird the ship, and fearing that they would run on the uh, Sirtis, they lowered the sea anchor, and so were driven. 
They were being pounded by the, the storm so violently that the next uh, that on the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. And on the third day, with their own hands, they threw the ship's tackle overboard. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest raged, all hopes of our being saved was at the last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul then stood up among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have set sail from Crete, and therefore avoided the damage and the loss. I urge you now to keep up your courage, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For last night there stood by me an angel of the God to whom I belong, and to whom I worship. And he said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before the emperor, and indeed God has granted safety to all those who are sailing with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. But we will have to run aground on some island. When's this reading of the word of the Lord? All thanks be to God. So this was a sailing ship. And uh, I love this because you know that I'm a sailor, right? So I'm reading this. And I'm like, all right, I can, I can imagine all this stuff. In my hand. But let's just say that when sailing boats cannot go directly into the wind, it just doesn't happen, right? And so um, the closest that you can sail into the wind at that time, I don't know, maybe 45 degrees, you know? So if the wind's blowing from the north, um, you had, you know, the closest you can go. So if you, if where you wanted to go was way up here and the wind was coming from there, you had to do this to get there, tacking. Um, but, and so the, and in the winter time, the wind came, so it was blowing straight down and they got a day when they had a south wind and they said, well, maybe we can make it to Phoenix because we can't stay where we are because it was exposed. The harbor was exposed. Maybe we can get over towards Crete and do that. But it was winter time and the storms were fierce and sure enough they got into the storm paul said don't do this don't do this but they do it and it's playing out exactly as paul had, had said um and they're in the midst of this but then he stands up the angel had visited him he says men we have to do this but it also says there's going to be a lot of danger here they undergirded the ship so what they did is they passed um ropes um down around the ship and then tied it together so if the ship hit it had a little bit better chance of maybe holding together right until it got over the reef and then they would be relatively safe the worst thing that they wanted to do was to have the boat get stuck on the reef and bust apart because then they would probably die so but as you know as i've always said if you're going to go on a cruise try to avoid going on a cruise with paul because he had terrible luck this isn't this isn't going to be his first uh, shipwreck maybe we'll hear about that shipwreck tomorrow okay luke moving on to our uh, gospel reading now things jump around um so um but we're going to hear or hear more about john the baptist really okay um, but when Jesus comes and he collects the disciples, many of the parables and many of the healings that occur during that time, it's very clear that, that it's not only to help those people, but it's to demonstrate the power of God, right? And the desire of God for people to be released from oppression. So that it's as much a teaching moment to the disciples as it is the healing moment for the people that receive it. But then it's more than that because they've seen, okay, Jesus can do all these things, but Jesus is saying, look, you know, I'm not going to be here all this time. You have the ability to do these things too. So he sends them out to experiment, to play, you know? Um, so this is kind of what we're going to hear about today. Let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. I might get in trouble for saying that they sent him out to play. To experience. That's right. Here we go. Then Jesus called the twelve together 
and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. He said to them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, nor bread, nor money, not even an extra tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. Whenever they do not welcome you, as you are leaving that town, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They departed and went through the villages, bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. Now Herod the ruler heard about all that had taken place, and he was perplexed, because it was said by some that John the Baptist had been raised from the dead, by some that Elijah had appeared, and by others that one of the ancient prophets had arisen. Herod said, John I beheaded, but who is this about whom I hear such things? And he tried to see him. On their return, the apostles told Jesus all they had done. He took them with him and withdrew privately to a city called Bethsaida. But Bethsaida. When the crowds found out about it, they followed him, and he welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and headed and heeded, oh, sorry, and healed those who needed to be cured. The day was drawing to a close, and the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away so that they may go into the surrounding villages and countryside to lodge and get provisions. For we are here in a deserted place. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. They said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we are to go and buy food for all these people. For there were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of about 50 each. They did so and made them all sit down. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked to heaven and blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And all ate and were filled. With what was left over was, was gathered up, 12 baskets of broken pieces. So in this reading of the word of the Lord, all thanks be to God. We could, um, we could have taken this passage and broken it into four different things and just dealt with each one separately. And each one would give us a valuable insight or a lesson. But when we take these four things and we put them together into the larger narrative that's going on, this is where uh, I talk about looking at the gospel like looking through a prism and this, as soon as you change it, it looks different. And here we see this. So what's happened here is he sent the 12 disciples out so that they could find out for themselves exactly the power that had been given to them, power to heal. Right, the power to proclaim the kingdom. Then he brings them back here, and then we hear about Herod saying, uh, "Who is this Jesus?" Right, because some people were saying, "Well, it's John the Baptist," right, or some people Elijah, um, or 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 another one of the prophets. And it says that Herod the king, the Jewish king, tries says he tries to see him, and then jumps to another one. They come. They tell them everything they are done. I can just imagine. We did this. We cured people. I saw this hand was crippled and it became whole. Right in front of me, Jesus. He says, all right, come on. Come with me. And the crowds follow. And then the feeding of the 5,000. And we have these five loaves and two fishes. And then there's 12 baskets. And we could, you know, there are so many different... Um, thoughts about why 12? Why was there five fishes, two loaves, and why was there 12 baskets to those? Does that numerology mean anything? Um, I don't know. I, I like to look at it, though. I don't know about the five and the two, but the 12, I think it's saying, look, first of all, they're saying they didn't realize that this thing that they had, right, could do this. So maybe they just thought it was like uh, they were physicians, you know, miracle workers. But yet it's more than that. They've been given the job of creating wholeness and relationship with each other. So there we go. So I think that the 12 baskets with many pieces, I think that represents the fact that there's been a multiplication 
right, of the food that God has for us. Right? The food that we need, the, the spiritual food, the emotional food, right? By participating in this, not only are we fed, but we feed others. Okay. That was almost my... Uh, uh, World uh, Communion Day message. I almost went off of lectionary, but I didn't. <laughs> Excuse me. Ah. All right. I'm going to go over here. Harvest out anything? Thank you, Carrie. Hi, Joanne Butters. Richard, good to see you. Hi, Nathan. Oh, Nathan, I'm so sorry about your loss, but I'm glad that our prayers are giving you some comfort. And we continue to pray. Hi, Katie and Don. Hello, my Aunt Mary. All right, I think we got it all. So, we're going to pray. Lord, we come here today, just as we do most days. And we come here, uh, some of us eager for the day to start, others of us are dreading something that might be happening today. We have people that are going for tests. Lord, we pray that uh, you will accompany all of them, that they'll know that they're not alone. Um, Lord, especially we want to lift up George today as he'll be undergoing some testing. We want to thank you for the continued healing that we're seeing with, uh, with people. But Lord, uh, your message, as we read through your, your scripture today, was clear. And that is that at best we can hope to have an intermediate position in this kingdom. But that best is wonderful. We're told that we will be higher than angels when the kingdom comes. But until then, we are ordinary humans that have been touched by your love and filled with your spirit and transformed into people that care. And sometimes we lose sight of that. Sometimes we feel put upon and uh, stretched in all directions. We feel like we're taken advantage of. We feel tired. So we come here. And Lord, we want to do this enough, but when we're having a joyous day, when things seem to be going great, Sometimes we forget to thank you for that. So we come regardless of uh, our condition. We come because we need you. So we ask you to fill our, our day because the promise is, is that you will fill each of our days. So we lean on that. And we pray for this world, this world that you created and that you gave the capacity to love you and to love each other, but also in all your fairness, also gave people the opportunity to turn away from that blessing. And Lord, uh, we're watching a world that we very, very much have to be part of. Because there's hearts and souls that need to be turned to you. Lord, you've met us wherever we are, and you will meet those other people where they are. But let us remain not only zealous disciples, but also disciples that listen more than we speak, so that we can develop empathy, and that we can help and take on the pains and the slings and the sorrows of others so that they might make it through the day. We stand tall because you have given us that reason. The 
the knowledge of the resurrection. And we do ask all of this in your name, your glorious name, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. Amen, all. Hey, God bless. And uh, as you uh, go about your day, just remember, you know, you get into a tough part of the day, maybe think about here what we said about here. The fact that we had so many people gathered to get today, 20 people praising God and also asking, asking for uh, relief from suffering for our, ourselves and others. Others first. All right. God bless. You have a great day in the Lord. You remember this, that, you know, God loves you. I love you. We all love you here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. Let us show you how. And God willing, and the creek don't rise, I'll be right back here with you at 930 tomorrow morning. All right. Have a great day in the Lord, all. God bless. Bye-bye.